What is freedom of will? This is a common question in the field of ineffective philosophy, also known as academic philosophy, the church of knowledge, and sophistry. If you have arrived here from a school that uses grades to control you under the threat of ridicule, punishment, being held back, and ruining your life, know that you are a victim of indoctrination and you will need something that some therapists call reprogramming. This is as good of a start for explaining freedom of will as any. A real school would never cut up knowledge into subjects, or threaten, or punish you, or rob you of your savings, and force you into a lifetime of loans. In a real school, when you are studying biology, you become enabled with new capabilities in the area. For example, for months, or for the rest of your life even, you end up loving and keeping around water bears as pets. You have videos of interesting happenings in the microbial world, and later go on to learn programming to encode strings of text into DNA and such. In a fake biology class, your teacher will force you to memorize that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and it will take you a couple of decades to realize that the curriculum was incomprehensible on purpose. It was so designed to force you to memorize for tests, because as tests, accreditation, funding, and politicians are concerned, Temporary memorization is just as good as effective education when it comes to selling you out the world and everything else. Later on in your life, the words mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell will be all that remains of your biology class, and it will greatly sadden and embarrass you how you were betrayed, manipulated, and used. If you are very unlucky, your biology teacher will be pretty cool. Talk about Dolly the cloned sheep, how dissection of frogs is wrong and unfair, and finally, how weed is just an herb. Here is actually a good example of a freedom of choice point, or a decision point, a fork in the road. Because in that moment, when you hear such words, you have to get up without any delay and leave. Go see your counselor, explain the situation, hear the low effort, and then just walk out, stare the security right in their creepy face to say the least, and go on about your life without being stained by everybody else's shit. Please don't actually drop out of school. Use school for your advantage. Use the library. Put an A-team together. Go on adventures. Keep each other away from trouble and drugs. All that stuff that everyone else is doing is a one-way road. It will make your life scroll by so fast, you're gonna be 80 by the time you realize where the mistakes are. Listen, if you hang around a barber shop for long enough, holy shit, you will eventually get a free haircut. Stay away from alcohol and drugs. This here is applied freedom of will. An event occurs that can derail you for the rest of your life, and you just leave with little doubt. The kids that remain in the biology class are an example of people who had their freedom subverted by threat. 
Some are already unable to quit their drugs and are glad to hear that it's just an herb as it helps them to keep it up to continue their addiction. Others will become responsible dads who every once in a while sneak something a little extra for their two-year-old here so that he can hope to rekindle his already failed life where he just went from loser to a fucking monster. Some mothers don't even care to notice that the kid always sleeps through sexy time. Others will, of course, spend their parents' money on college. Maybe a DUI, maybe academic suspension, but almost certainly debt and depression for decades. Some will end up in trash cans, worried about garbage collection day, trying to understand why their family is so vile. I actually had the honor of meeting a garbage kid once. I think he did well in life. He was powerful in high school, and I'd like to believe that he became a philosopher. He stood up to the entire world that was trying to strangle him. One of the greatest mistakes that the soon-to-be principal of my school ever made was recruiting me as a control sample to his suicide club experimental class. I really hoped that this man became wise enough to see that the rejects were the most brilliant and beautiful students in that entire school. It was the elite. Being part of that class completely restored my faith in humanity, hampered by bullies, creepers, pretenders, and regretters. It was them who gave me the courage to drop out, to do the right thing for me, the honest thing for me, the life-changing thing for me. Again, please don't drop out from school. Use the library as your own playpen. Own it. You don't have to age that fast. Just enjoy the experience. Call out the teachers. Ask them about this bullshit memorization crap. Try to get them to learn from each other's curriculums to test how effective they are. Um, and search for functional knowledge, not just memorized knowledge. To learn something means to grow in capacity, not just be able to blab something about mitochondria. While my own freedom of will remains strong among all the doubt that this event caused, I lacked the understanding that I needed books and all of them. And instead, I kind of spoiled an opportunity, the opportunity to fix a school, to, instead of trying to memorize and pass everything, to rebuild school into an interactive, self-paced, self-directed experience, build an alternative high school. There's good money in that, and there is good future in that as well. It's also a very noble effort. Instead of hoping to fix education and starting my own school, I was threatened into memorizing for the adult education tests that really derailed me. It was still a high school and a high school diploma, but the students were not treated like cattle or meat in a meat processing plant. I suspect the principals always know that they cause great harm to the children, and they help those who stick out far enough. They are arrogant. They are ignorant. Please make no mistake. But uh, they're probably not evil. They just bargain with it. You see, freedom of choice is not just a question, it is a powerful act. It is an act of dividing yourself from where everyone else wants you to be. 
when you are subjected to ineffective education and asked the question of free will, then the teacher paints you as infantile. They are entertaining themselves with you. And they paint themselves as a goddamn fool. Freedom of choice is also extremely urgent. A single hesitation in the world of choice will cost you a decade in life. While after I spoiled the high school test and basically ruined my calling out of fear, I did have the presence of mind to push everything else away for long enough to study more advanced programming, professional programming. And I ended up with 3.1 jobs as a result. Again, learning for real is different from ineffective education. Learning for real means that you have effective education and great power. A fake education is just words and a lot of pretending. In my first programming job that lasted less than a minute, the moment I signed the paperwork, I was asked, Do you know where I can get some weed? That was right after I signed the paperwork. In my second job, I was told that if I wanted a raise, I should go to a strip club, eventually followed by being told that I will never receive a raise, and I quit instantly. Do not bargain with the flimsy wife of a racist cop. There is nothing there. There is no future in these little companies that don't know what they are doing. In the third job, my correct use of the words class instance, a very important concept in object-oriented programming, prompted my co-workers to call me Buzzword Boy. They made a little website with my picture where I could not look fatter even if I tried. This helped me lose 100 pounds and started me on a lifelong journey towards becoming a shit-kicking beefcake. In my fourth job, I was tasked with destroying cross-platform user interface layouts that I created in favor of CSS, a technology that still isn't quite ready yet. It can be done today, and kind of just started working, but not perfectly, even after some 17 years from that day. Tolerance of fake education means that you will be surrounded by people who have received one. They will be your managers, the company owners, and the friends of company owners who just heard this new version of CSS is coming around and everything should be CSS. No. The overall result of ineffective education is that you can only end up in two work environments among losers and uneducated pretenders and hustlers who never worked a day in their life, or in an environment so toxic that every paycheck will take weeks of your life away just to be fired when you are finally half dead from blood clots. The more theoretical part of the question of will consists of two main parts. One, have you accepted your intellectual inheritance as it has been posed by all the clear-thinking great beings that set their legacy in books? In other words, you must be able to push stress away, 
probably by means of adventure like hiking and camping, where stress and toxicity can't get to you and begin consuming narrated books. You are very lucky to be living this day and age where they are very accessible. You get to walk through the woods and beaches and listen to great beings helping you inherit their greatest intellectual achievements. Please, never sleep in trash cans and never go on the trail alone. Rather than dropping out of school, you have to begin working on a self-directed visualization-based alternative to high school. There are no shortcuts without education. You have to become a teacher. Not a drifter, not a lifelong adventurer, but a teacher. And the second, more frightening part, you have to contemplate your indoctrination. It has been said that we are genetically predisposed to listen to our elders. The kids who do not heed the warnings about snakes or bears simply do not live long enough to pass their genes forward. And your indoctrination is again, almost by the very definition, completely fantasy-based. It purely depends on to whom you are born. If you are born to a well-to-do secular family, this will take you one way. If you are born to a poor family threatened by addiction, guns, or warlords even, your life will move completely different way. What you have to do is find your true self so that you are you on either of those ends of the spectrum, no matter what lifeline you are traveling. You have to push away what you have been born into, at least for a while, take in your intellectual inheritance, and make such choices in life that the elder you will not only not regret them, but be happy and proud that you have made them. Learning for real is basically about upgrading your operating system as you unchain yourself to whatever you were born into, good but probably not as good as you thought, or bad. Freedom of will is a question about answering to your only master, your elder self, including your elder self on the last day of their long life. The operating system upgrade, or what you will inherit from books that end up constituting your intellectual inheritance, will give you some simple ideas that I will try to help you to now so that you have a head start. You are charged with growing all the way up, never just part way up. And to grow all the way up and become an adult means to become a great being. The same kind of person that you as a child hoped that all the adults were. It's that simple. And we have a duty to humanity as well. We have to repair schools, as we are just one enormous family, all equally intelligent. We must not live split by levels of understanding and education, fractured by mutually incompatible and equally made up indoctrination. We certainly should not live in a state where children can be drafted and killed in wars ran by ghouls who never cared to prevent them or even know what a war is like. 
and we must put an immediate end to living in states of mutually assured destruction, poverty, pollution, despeciation, and anthropogenic climate change. It is impossible to give you any more guidance than this, because you are infinitely different from every other human being that exists, existed, and will ever exist. No one will ever be like you. As proof, consider the unique trails of wisdom that will call to you as you begin listening to the 10,000 or so books that encompass your intellectual inheritance. Stop memorizing for tests. That goes for all of you. And never forget to remind your teachers that in a compromise between good and evil, only evil will profit.